Great. What kind of, uh, I guess, problems does Ryan Mueller pr present at defensive end there? Man, I don't know. He plays as hard as anybody I've ever seen. Uh, he's very active, uh, very, very smart. He's tough to block one-on-one, -on -one, and then, I mean, he just has a great motor. There's sometimes still you to be out of position or miss a play uh, in the backfield, <coughs> and before you know it, he's tracking the guy down on the other side of the field for, for a minimal gain. I mean, it's just uh, he has an unbelievable motor to never give up on play, and uh, we got to know where he's at at all times because he's very disruptive. So. Does that make him kind of a, a wild card almost? Because it's hard to tell someone expect him to do something Unexpected as far as no, I mean he's sound. He plays their system well. I didn't. I just meant sometimes he may get beat or get out of position or miss a tackle on the backfield, and you think, okay, you're, you moved on to the next guy, and the next thing you know, he's making the tackle four or five yards down the field. Um, you know, he's he's got his own highlight reel of plays. If you watch the cutups we've looked at, um, he's made some great strips and just uh, just some great hard effort plays. And uh, he's you can tell he's got sparks and, and he, he's made a lot of plays for a reason. Right, when you guys run that uh, quick huddle formation, I guess, is there a specific name for that play or that formation? It's or just it? something we do from time to time. Right. You did, when you did that a couple of times, you had Sean on the right side and like a really heavy line with CJ. We've side. done it for eight years, so we do it a bunch of different ways. We can do it out any set we got. Talk about going on the road. I mean, having, having a lot of experience, I don't know how comforting yeah. is that getting ready to go on the road, uh, especially for, you know, I guess. That, that it's a good thing from the standpoint that we know our guys have been there. So, you know, it, it, we, we know they know what to expect to some degree. Now, a lot of them may not have ever been to Manhattan, which, uh, you know, from everything we've been told and the guys, we got some guys on staff and some guys that have been there and they said, I mean, it's incredible atmosphere. So, uh, we know that part's a great challenge, but at the same time, it's a new team. How, how are we going to respond? Uh, to adversity, how are we going to respond to momentum swings in the game? Um, you know, every time you go on the road in our league, um, each venue has different things that uh, make things more difficult. But from, from all we can tell, it's going to be a really good challenge for us, just like playing in any other SEC venue. Having the, the early bye week, two weeks in, where do you see that help your team the most? I just think it's good because you've got two games on film now. And so now we can go back and correct things that have actually happened in the game. Because so often, you get to where guys can execute plays in practice or versus scout teams, but then you get those long <coughs> looks um, for guys even that have been here that, that maybe haven't played as many snaps or even the new guys. And, and we were able to step back and go, okay, here's the freshmen or here are the, the guys that haven't played as much that we think are ready for more playing time or here's positions we need to put them in. So we just we have two games worth of information that we can kind of maybe go in, in the direction we feel like our team should go this year quicker than, say, if your bye week's week six or seven. So. Uh, and then when you're playing an opponent like Kansas State, of course, it's great to have as much time as you can have to get prepared. Who may have earned more playing time for you guys? Um, you know, it was good to see Rock play in the last game. It was good to see Braden play. Um, you know, even guys like Sean Coleman, uh, who just hadn't played in four years. It's good to see now he's played two games. We can, we, you know, you can hope to expect to see him now settle in and make even a bigger jump. Uh, Stan Truitt's a guy who hadn't played yet, but he's not off the table uh, to contribute. Um, I'm just trying to think. Uh, those are a couple guys that come to mind. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we've got two games worth of information, and we can make maybe quicker tweaks or changes than we could if we were five, six games down the road. How much progress do you feel like you made from the start of the season? Well, I think, I think we, we cleaned up a lot of things in game two. Uh, game two was not a pretty game. It was not easy. It was a struggle at times, but most of the drives ended with points. But we had to work for them, which I think was good because that's what Kansas State wants you to do. That's what we're going to be presented with this week. Uh, I think we made strides, but you know, at the same time, the negative is you want to play two games. So uh, you know, it, it's hard to say at this point. This will be a great test. We played at home twice. Um, there's a lot of comfort in that. Now we're going on the road where we're uncomfortable. It's just about 70 guys and some coaches. You know, we'll have some fans there because we travel great, but. Uh, you know, you're walking into a, a really tough situation. I think it's a great measuring stick. See where we're at, and, um, and we're going to learn a lot about our team, uh, this year's team, on Thursday. Rick, have you seen the players excited about playing a ranked team on the road? For the first time? Yeah, I think our guys are excited. To, uh, that they know we're playing a really good opponent at their place, uh, and it's a great. You know, we just kept telling them it's a great opportunity to see where we're at. We're going to know a whole lot more about our team. You look around the country in the first two to three weeks. You got one week of them beat somebody and everybody thinks they're on top of the world next week they don't play well or vice versa. And, and you know, we're obviously looking for that consistency. And, um, you know, this is just the next step in, 
you know, us trying to get better. When we right, spoke there were some times last year you guys would get up big, obviously you don't control the defense, but then you guys would stutter a little bit mm -hmm. offensively. Do you feel like you guys have gotten to that point where you guys are not going to be able to, you know, let go of the throttle? I mean, the second half of these games you guys have really kind of proven that a little bit. Yeah, I hope so. Um, you know, there was definitely a couple games, you know, Georgia, Florida State, and some others come to mind that, that we, we maybe hit a lull at, at times that, that hurt us uh, from an offensive standpoint anyways. Um, we've done fairly well in the second halves, finishing games, these first two games. Uh, you know, it's sometimes too now credit goes to that opponent because you may start having success and then they make a change or they just up their level because we're playing some really good people in a lot of cases that you were talking about. And, um, <coughs> you got to make some adjustments. But, you know, it's just we preach to our guys all the time. You can't be up and down. It can't be, hey, we're up 14, 21 points, and so we relax and let them back in it. And we get down 14, 21, we can't, can't fold our tent. you just got to be even keel because in our league and, and we're, just about every week we play people, the, the mood swings and the emotions are up and down, up and down, up and down, as most of our games were last year. And our guys got to be able to just kind of pierce through all that and stay even keel all the way through the game. So we preach that all the time, but there's nothing like the experience of doing it. And so that's why I'm excited about Thursday. Will you take all four quarterbacks on the road with you? Uh, yeah, all four of those guys will travel. When we talked to you last week about recruiting Nick and just the process of against Kansas State in particular, just when you look back on it, just how important a role did actually Jake Waters committing the month earlier actually kind of play in the whole process of just how kind of things ended up playing out for, for both schools as far as? Uh, you probably have to ask them. I don't know. To our knowledge, it didn't have any effect. So, because he was still being recruited. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm ready to talk about the game, not recruiting stories. Um, Jay, Jay Proch, obviously, a big part of the offense last year. Yep. Talk about Brandon's kind of development this, this first couple of games. What have you seen out of him? In that he's role? gotten really, he's gotten better both games. He's one guy that I have seen improve. You know, the first game he played really well. He just had to sustain blocks better. I thought he did that in game two better. He's definitely going to have a challenge with some of their ends and backers in this game. Uh, you know, and the thing I've been pleased with Brandon is he's a big guy. He's 270 pounds. He's so athletic, sometimes you forget that. And we were worried about his conditioning early on, but he's done a good job. Of course, Scott, Coach Fountain's done a really good job with him and CJ splitting time and mixing and matching and keeping him fresh. But, um, you know, his attitude's been fantastic. I think he's feeling more comfortable every day, and uh, hopefully he'll continue to progress. There's been some things he's done really well. We don't talk about it a lot, but are you happy so far with Cap and Corey and catching passes out of the backfield? Oh, yeah. Things the yeah, very happy. I mean, you know, uh, I think the first game, Cap had a big third down conversion. Corey did the same on the check down in the first game and the second game, and that's just what we preached to the quarterbacks, man. We've hit our backs twice on check downs and once on a screen on third down, and we've converted. So, um, you know, just trust the system, go with where your read takes you. But Corey and Cap, they catch the ball well. Uh, and that obviously helps keep them from being one-dimensional. They're really pleased with the way they've progressed in the passing game. Kansas State has statistically, for the last few years, had one of the tougher run defenses in the country. Uh, from film, what makes them so so hard to run or against you, you think? Yeah, well, they, they don't do a ton. They're really good at what they do. And that's just a credit to their coaching staff and why they've been good for so long. They're very gap sound. They're, never, they're, they're rarely going to give you something cheap. They're going to make you earn everything in the run and the pass game. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to be gap sound. They're going to have guys fitting where they're supposed to fit. Uh, you're either going to have to make a guy miss a tackle or you're going to have to block everything extremely well. Um, they're not going to, you know, they play tempo offenses too where they're at in their league. So it's not going to be anything new to them. They're not going to give you cheap, uh, you know, bone coverages or busted assignments or busted blitzes where they turn a gap free and you gash them for a big one. You're going to have to earn everything you get. And it's so hard in leagues like ours and theirs to drive the ball consistently, 8, 10, 12 play drives, over and over and over and over. It just doesn't happen very often. you got to have, I mean, if I think if you were to probably look at just offense in general in the big conferences, you got to have explosive plays and a lot of drives to score. And a lot of drives, if you have one explosive play, probably good things happen. They limit those explosives. And, uh, you know, I think they know it starts with stopping the run first and trying to make people one-dimensional, and they do that very well. Right. After the first bye week last year, you all kind of dedicated to the zone read. Did you kind of learn something this week, especially with Nick, that maybe you were able to take advantage of a certain certain part of his game a little bit more, uh, yeah. especially in the passing? It was different this year because we knew so much more. Uh, we knew so little last year that it was like, okay, let's just completely alter the direction we're going. Let's go this way. This year we already have a pretty good idea of the big picture. Um, there may have been some things we said, hey, we can clean up, or hey, we can go this direction a little more in some schemes, but 
Um, it's been more personnel driven probably that we've gotten information, hey, this guy can handle more. This guy's ready to give, be given a shot. This guy's better in, in these situations. Uh, and that's across the board, it's not one person. We probably learn more about just the personnel of this year's team and how it fits and uh, as opposed to maybe, well, we need to start doing, you know, go this completely new direction. We already kind of had a pretty good idea of the direction. It's just been a bunch of, a bunch of little things that hopefully will show. It's like right. last year would be a snap or two with Jeremy coming in on the road. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like he's progressing up where you need to? You can put him out there for more than one play as we've seen. Yeah, yeah, there's game. there's no doubt. I've got plenty of confidence in Jeremy to, uh, to, to do it all. Um, so that's, like I, we said before, that's, we feel good about both of them. Um, there's that fine line. You know, last year there was a couple times I think we talked, it wasn't intentional necessarily just to play in one play. And so there's always that fine line. You don't want to jerk a guy around. And you don't want to take Nick out of rhythm if he's playing well. And you don't want to put Jeremy in and take him out and, and ask him to go do things that put him in a tough spot. So um, a lot of those things are things that sound good until you have to actually manage you know, 18, 22-year-old kids' emotions and their ability to be successful. So we factor all those things in, but uh, got plenty of confidence in Jeremy to, to do it all. Fred, would you say the biggest disappointment for you right now for the offense is that you know, we've heard all offseason about ball security yep. being this major thing, and through two games you already had four on the ground, three of them have been recovered by the other team. Yeah, the biggest disappointment uh, for me is I think we have two fumbles. Maybe I'm wrong. I was just looking at the stats. And yeah, Cameron Arch Payne fumbled in the first game and Nick did in the second game. And, and then I know Duke fumbled one out of bounds in the first game as well. Rock fumbled right at the end of the game. And yeah, that's right. You're right. You're right. Last play, yeah, you're, you're exactly right. right. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like being at my house. You know, time, so, uh, so usually there I learn to not even try to be right. Uh, you're right, we have. And uh, that's, but if you wouldn't have led me that way, that was going to be my answer. Uh, the ball security, it's, uh, you know, and there's nobody who cares more about it than Cameron Artis Payne or Nick. And, uh, but that is, that's frustrating as a coach when you emphasize something you have all year long and, and you preach it, you preach it, you preach it, you know it's the one thing that will get you beat. And, uh, you know, you have two instances, really three, where, uh, you know, you just get careless with the ball. You know, Rock being a freshman, first game action, that's different. But two seniors, it's unacceptable. And they know that. They paid the price for it. It's been emphasized more than it even ever has. And, it's just a matter of, you know, to me, that's, that's, that takes no ability in the world to hold on the football. It's all about effort, want to, and ball conscious. You've got to be ball conscious. You can't break the, you know, break four tackles and be at the six yard line and think you've already scored when you're six yards away. Uh, you know, you can't be going down and relaxed when they're all coming in there to strip it out. I mean, you just got to be ball conscious in our, in our league. And, you know, we can tell them to we're blue in the face. If we don't do better, it's going to cost us a game. At some point, it will if we don't take care of it. I want to ask you uh, real quick, was Sammy out there again today? Or, yeah. Sammy's, Sammy's progressing very well. You know, we're still very optimistic he'll, he'll be ready to roll. Everybody good? Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.